I am thinking of doing something a little bit different as well as possibly very bad. This is Zuzu's litter. They're about a week old and she's not doing a very good job nursing them. They're really skinny and they have been very skinny for days and days. It's like she feeds them only a very little bit every once in a while. And I'd really hate to lose this litter, but because we're doing stuff naturally, I don't want to like force her to feed them and stuff. And also that oftentimes doesn't work. So I'm thinking of fostering some of her babies into Tia's nest and her litter because she's being such an excellent mom. And they are within a week old of each other, so they're similar enough in age to foster over and not to be too much of a problem. We have a whole bunch of orange kits in here, as well as several torts. And while those colors are okay, we also have two Harlequins, which this is our first batch of Harlequin kits since last year when Sela died. So preferably, I would like to keep them because they're easy to tell apart from other color kits as well as their unique pelt colors would make really cool pelts whenever we end up butchering them and saving their pelts and preserving them. So I'm considering moving them to this litter. But Tia is a first time mom and I really, I'm kind of hesitant to do that. Like I don't know how she'll react. It will probably be just fine, but I'd hate for her to not accept them because they smell different and her, her entire litter or something weird happen because I fostered them and I make her fail in her first litter because of my human interfering but then at the same time we are gonna lose these babies if I don't do something. I think it's very unlikely that Zuzu will start nursing them all of a sudden and maybe if she had less babies in her litter whenever she does nurse them they'd get a little bit more and be able to survive longer or completely. I guess I will try fostering. I don't think it's super likely that I'll mess up her being a good mom with fostering other kits and saving some kits lives means that we'll have however many rabbits we save we'll have that much more meat in our freezer and that many more pelts so yeah I guess I'll try it there are already seven kits in here so if I add the two harlequins from Zuzu's litter that means we'll have nine and I think that's all I'll want to do because that's a pretty good sized litter and she's a first timer and I don't want to give her too many. I know I probably could give her more, but she only has eight teats, so giving her one more kit than the teats, while well, it's not a really bad thing, and a lot of moms do just fine with more kits than teats to nurse. I don't want to give her too much more, because then everyone else suffers for it, and if I'm fostering, I don't know, I don't want her original litter to suffer because I'm giving her extra kits because another mom was being bad, so I think two will be good. Are you ready to go to your new mommy? She's gonna be a good mommy. She's gonna nurse you, and feed you, and take care of you. All right, Harleys, come here. Yeah, Tia. Tia seems to like enjoy checking on these babies too. You look just like your mom. Look at that, she's like a tiny Zuzu. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Okay, let's take you. Oh, hi Tia. Yeah, we're gonna give you a baby. A new one, another one. So like a week part apart in age, and so if you can tell, oh you can totally tell, look at that, look at that difference. So this will be interesting, okay, that's one, come here, little baby, come here, we're going to give you a new mommy, there, hopefully they'll have all this morning and afternoon and maybe even till tomorrow morning to smell like the rest of the litter and be normal so that when Tia feeds them again she can't tell. They're already all in the fur. They'll probably be peed on by the other kit. So they will start to smell like their foster mom's scent and her baby's scent as well. And with that done, all we can do now is wait. Hopefully this goes okay. So that means we have four left. One, two, Three, four, yes, four. And I mean, they're so skinny. It's really sad. Hopefully Zuzu keeps nursing them a little bit. Okay, maybe with fewer kits you'll get more to drink. That'd be awesome. I just finished checking Zuzu's litter. It's nighttime now, 
and she fed them a little bit. Their bellies aren't quite as empty as they were before. They're not completely full, so but at least she did a little bit of feeding, which is good. And Tia has not nursed her litter again yet. It's completely normal for does to nurse only once a day. Some do it twice, some do it just once. So I'm not worried about that. But those two foster kids still have not been fed for a while. So hopefully they can make it till tomorrow morning when she probably will feed them again. But her actual children are doing really good and they're still full. It's just the ones who haven't been fed for a while who are suffering a little bit. It's morning time again and I'm checking on the litter. The two fosters look a little bit fuller than they did last night, but not very much. The rest of the kids aren't super full, but they are nice and full. They're not stuffed though. So I'm not sure if she fed them real quick or if she did feed them and because there's so many, they all got less than they're usually getting or if she didn't feed them and I'm just remembering incorrectly, but the two super skinny ones aren't quite as super skinny. So that's a good thing. It's evening time again and they are still not fed. Her actual kits are doing just fine. But these foster ones are still real skinny. But they're both alive, which is good I guess. It is morning time again and I have some very, very good news to share. The foster babies were fed. Look at that belly, it's for sure full. Isn't that so good? Tia's original kits are very full, they're stuffed, and both foster kits have some milk in them. Not like as much as the other babies, but they're bigger, so they need more. And with nine of them, I do expect everyone to get a little bit less, but they do have some milk in them, so that's really good. For a little bit there, I was worried that my putting foster babies in with this litter had caused Tia to abandon them or to not be a good mom, but it looks like she's doing a great job now. Zuzu's litter is doing amazing. While they're not super, super full, like their bellies aren't huge, you can tell they are very, very fed. Not huge, but they are nice and normal and a little bit on the bigger side even. So now, I'm wondering if I should put those two kids I fostered into Tia's litter back into here. In hindsight, it probably would have been better if I had just left the two with this litter instead of moving them. If I would have known that Zuzu would be a good mom, I would have left them with her. And since she's doing a much better job of nursing them, and nine kits for a first time mama is a lot, and those two in Tia's nest aren't getting super fed, I might put them back with their original mama and siblings tonight. Okay babies! Thank you for doing so well with your foster mom and siblings, but we're going to put you back now. Come on. We don't want any of the other does fur on you. We don't want you to smell just like Zuzu and her babies. So, if you can tell, the difference between this kit and this kit, they're the same age. Look at the difference. Look at that. This one's so much bigger. Yeah. Alright, let's grab the other one as well. Okay, back to your original mom. Okay, there we go. Then we'll get you smelling like them. You'll be in their fur, in the pee, and with the other kits. So hopefully you smell just like Zuzu's kits and she can't tell that you smell like Tia's babies. It's the next morning and Tia's litter is all super stuffed and it looks like she pulled more fur for them and Zuzu's litter is not fed. The unfostered kits, who I just put back with her, are really skinny and not fed. She didn't feed them at all last night, but these ones were fed, so now I'm wondering if I should have kept the fostered ones with their foster litter, and they would have been more fed. Once you start interfering, it's really hard to stop. But I'm just going to leave them with who they are with right now and not mess with them anymore. 
I probably shouldn't have messed with them to start with. I guess this is what I get for meddling and not letting nature just do its thing. It's evening. Everyone is alive. These guys don't look like they were fed, but they're still left over full. This one looks kind of maybe a little fed, so maybe she did come and feed them a little bit. I can't really tell. I'm not sure if her milk is not high or if she doesn't stay in long enough. This one, though, is looking real skinny. But I'm just going to leave everything how it is because I've already meddled and messed things up enough. I'm just going to leave everybody. They're all alive and all warm. So, Zuzu still is not doing a good job of feeding these babies. I tried holding her down and letting them nurse under her, but that didn't turn out well at all. So, I don't know. Maybe they got a little bit. But these two, ones who were fostered, are still really, really skinny. So, it's possible we'll lose some or all of this litter. Hopefully she starts being a better mom. This is her first time, but we've put all this work and money and effort into getting these babies so so I'd really hate to lose them all but now she's all mad at me I'm sorry it is now a long time later and both Zuzu's litter and Tia's litter are out of the nest box and eating solid foods thankfully all of Zuzu's kits made it Despite her not feeding them very well, they are now able to eat hay and food scraps, so they don't rely on her for nourishment anymore. Both Tia and Zuzu aren't doing the best job at feeding their babies outside of the nest box, but the kids are often able to steal a few sips of milk from random mamas in addition to eating all their solid foods, so they are able to get nourishment that way. And as a little side note, you might notice the Magpie Harlequin kit that is normal with no flaky skin. That is the flaky skin baby we had, who is doing perfectly well now. So overall, both litters are doing very well. In a few weeks, they will be weaned out of the colony and put into our grow-out pen. And there, they will grow until butcher time, until they're butchered. Except for one of Tia's babies, who I'm still debating whether or not I should keep, because her mother and genetics are so good. So I will end the video here at a very happy conclusion to very strange and stressful events. Thanks for watching!